Thank you. I will explain the banana later. It's a significant part of today. Four foot inflatable bananas. There we are. So, um, we've had some great inspiring talks today uh, already, and I want to hopefully show a connection with those. A number of our speakers have talked about the K-12 system, and I'm going to be talking about what happens three months later when they, uh, they land at university. Um, and the thing is that there's a real challenge sometimes in uh, engage, engaging them, and uh, I'm going to talk about an experiment that we've been running this last year. Uh, I've dubbed it the Yun Lecture. And uh, when I say it's a radical new approach, I don't think it's that radical, and certainly not for this audience, but uh, it's kind of a, a title which gets people uh, watching and listening. Um, put another way, why did 90 students sign up for a new course in 37 se seconds without seeing a course outline? There was obviously something wrong with the system. This is what happened. November last year, um, I promoted a new course that uh, we said um, a few words about only, and we told them it was starting in January and it was going to be cool, and we said we only promoted it on Facebook, and uh, we ignored all the regular systems of courses. We were very late. I was told that nobody would sign up because it was a month before the term started and everybody had their courses. And as I say, at 8.30 on a Monday morning in the middle of November, we had 90 people sign up. Um, so we ran the pilot in January. And what I want to show you as well what is I think that this is a, not a, just a, an educational challenge and an opportunity, but I think it's something which has got relevance to all walks of life, uh, in, in, not just in school, in work, in government, uh, community, home. There's a lot of... Uh, things that we do where we're stuck in a rut. Um, it, we, we've kind of got this status quo mentality of let's repeat what we did last year and here are the rules and you know, you've got to fit into the system. And so it doesn't matter whether you're a student fitting in or whether you're a teacher fitting in, here are the rules, conform. Um, I'm a kind of rule breaker and uh, I've learned the hard way that you can't break all the rules all the time, otherwise you're a radical and you get fired. But sometimes, um, but sometimes if you understand the rules, then you can systematically break them for the common good. And because otherwise, you just follow along and repeat what happened before. So I'm, I'm trying to break the rules, uh, but in an altruistic way, uh, I guess. So we've heard a number of things. Uh, uh, Alyssa talked to us earlier today about kind of being bored in, in class. You know, why? So this is the university challenge, I would say. Why are students bored? Maybe it's not because they cannot be interested. It's not because they didn't sign up and spend money coming to university on good grades because they weren't interested in learning. It's because somebody's boring them, right? And um, it's also, why are they distracted? We heard about distraction earlier, kind of all the many changes. Uh, you know, they're on the, a lot of my colleagues will complain about students being on their laptops or their phones texting. Well, why? Because there's nothing to otherwise engage them. So um, this is the kind of the, the myth, I think, of large classes in universities. A large le lecture mean, uh, sorry, a large class means that we have to deliver one-way lectures for hours at a time, and we expect people to listen to us uh, and not be watching that interesting TED talk from last year uh, or whatever it might be on YouTube. And then we've got hundreds of people that we have to evaluate, so we better run a multiple choice exam, and I, I know that some people can design innovative multiple choice tests, but uh, very often they default us back to memorization. That's pretty criminal in a K-12 system, but it's really criminal in, a, uh, in an undergrad uh, or postgrad system. So um, what do we do? We ran this pilot course with 90 people last January. I have to tell you, by the way, from that pilot, we then rolled it out to nearly 500 this September that we're in the middle of now. Um, not 500 in one class, thank goodness. We're running four parallel sections of it. So I call this on lecture. Um, kind of in my mind, I had this Energizer bunny. And uh, this was uh, kind of hopefully me if I kind of could get enough caffeine. But also, um, it was the students that they would be as energized at the end of a class and by the middle of term and at the end of term as they were, they, they were at the beginning when they come in with all this enthusiasm. Um, so um, what did we do? We did lots of things. Um, the, we got rid of exams, right? I figured they were stressful and so on. So we got rid of exams, and at the end, they have to prepare a mind map on what they learned that was relevant to them. So the answers are different. There isn't a right answer. Um, students are blogging all the time, trying to connect what they're doing in class to the uh, business news. Actually, they only use business news and some journal articles um, as their references. 
Uh, the publishing companies don't like me very much. I don't use textbooks. Um, there's no textbook in this course, and there's no exams. Um, there's a high level of participation. In large classes, we found a way to walk microphones around and to get lots of touch points. We're using kind of clickers. You know, it's like who wants to be a millionaire? Ask the audience, except you ask your peers. Um, we run uh, Twitter back channels in class, not all the time. It becomes a little bit chaotic, but selectively for certain assignments. Um, and really, uh, it's a bit like Matt's talk earlier today about mixing different elements. We're running a mashup of uh, different things. We're trying to make it busy enough uh, and interesting enough that people haven't got time to get bored or be distracted. Right? So I've got 500 students blogging uh, at the moment. And it was interesting to hear Chris talk at the beginning of today about the blogging in grade 12. Because I have to tell you that some of the students coming into the university, they're scared out of their minds about blogging. I said, but you're all on Facebook. And they said, yeah, but that's different. You know? And I said, how's it different? And they said, well, we're not sure, but this feels like kind of everyone's going to be watching us. I said, don't worry. If, you, if you're really boring, nobody will read your blog. Right? <laughs> um, so. Uh, anyway, we've got some really cool stuff going on. And more, more seriously, beyond this, I'm saying, why would you send an employer your resume? Why are they going to read a page of words that say that you had a high GPA and that you volunteered to kind of in McDonald's or, or, what, or you worked in McDonald's and volunteered in a shelter? Fantastic, but you're all the same. right? So show them that you can think and that you can write and that you can express yourself. And so certainly where I've been running blogs in other courses, I've got 40 students. They come back and they said, hey. I got the job because the interviewer said I stood out because they could see how I thought and how I would work and that I actually had a useful skill. Um, so um, we heard about onions a little bit earlier um, and kind of a slightly different twist on, on this uh, analogy. But it, it was really this uh, allowing students to peel back the layers, learning by discovery. Don't tell them and then kind of, oh, OK, I'll memorize, but try and intrigue so that they can put things together. Uh, you can tell, I like visual metaphors. I figure if I use enough, then at least one of them might connect with my audience uh, at some point in time. So I like stained glass windows, because if you just walk to the side a little bit differently, then the light's showing differently. So it's like walking around a problem and, and helping people to walk around and access problems and solutions in different ways. And then finally in this series, jigsaw puzzles. I want to show people enough that they're engaged to try and put the pieces together. But you can recombine the pieces in different ways. And you certainly won't get them all in one class. And you probably won't get them all in one course. And actually, this is a bit of a surprise for the students. They're not kind of expecting to hear this. But you probably won't get it all in this degree. Um, you'll probably take a lifetime putting the puzzle together. And it may be a bigger and more complex puzzle by the time you've finished it. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is dramatize the tensions uh, and then highlight synergies between disciplines. It's all within business, but I'm a marketing guy, and so I get to kind of take, uh, kind of to tease my uh, kind of good uh, colleagues in accounting and other disciplines. In this course, we've actually uh, in a, got 11 different professors working uh, in the course. So the coordination costs are quite high. And I think one of the things is a lot of our systems, they, walk, they work around what's convenient for the teacher or the professor rather than what's appropriate for the learning experience. And so the fantastic thing is, is I've, asked I've, I've asked 11 different people amongst my colleagues whether they'd be part of this. And every one of them has. Right? Um, nobody said no. Nobody asked whether they were going to be paid. Um, that wasn't the point. They, they figured it was a cool thing to do. And um, so it's been really good. I've even got the dean teaching in the classroom. And I'm not sure if he's ever been teaching undergraduates before. Uh, in the last 10 years, he's been raising money and going to all sorts of meetings. And now he's back in the classroom. So less is more. The temptation when you bring a lot of specialists in is, is that everybody says, I've got so much to share. And they fill up the agenda. And what we've got is we've got quite a strict discipline about the planning of this class. We said two themes in 80 minutes. Right? So typically, you get to do a 10-minute delivery of con concept at most. And then there's got to be some activity or exercise so that people can play and, and, and work with it and then connect to the second one. So why the banana? Well, it's kind of a, a random, we're different. We're weird, kind of, and please. Uh, I walk around with this, and, and I get stopped by everybody. Said, what this about? what's this about? I said, it's about the fact that we're changing what we're doing, and this is the 101 banana. We're, we're Commerce 101. We're changing things around. So what's the student feedback? Um, the good thing about running a pilot is you get feedback. Um, these are some of the positives. You can read them for yourself. They love the atmosphere. Um, it's not hard for us to focus. Um, it's kind of helping with my critical thinking skills. These are all quotes. Right? Um, I love the interactivity. I, it would be nice if I could tell you that everything was going smoothly and uh, like a dream. But the trouble is that 
with any change, there are some people who want to run fast, and there are others who are, are maybe not quite comfortable. So some of the kinks. Of course, in a pilot, you have to improve some things. There are some things which you can tweak. They're operational. That's fairly easy. You expect to have to improve them. But the ambiguity really challenges some students. The very people that are saying that they were bored, they've become addicted to textbooks with the answer at the end, and there only being one answer, and learning to the test. And so we've got some students really stressed and almost complaining about, but you haven't given us enough clear instruction, right? And so I've realized I have to try and detox the addiction, right, to direct a linear specific direction, right? And that's what we're starting to try and do. So yes, it's challenging. The students say, this is really challenging. We're having to think. I said, yes, you're having to think. Uh, and so this is the reality, the reality of change in a pilot. Different people come at different speeds. And I think you have to be brave to, uh, and have a bit of a thick skin to go with it. There's no secret sauce. We're just experimenting systematically. Um, one of the key things is, is that you have to time your change effort. I learned in previous careers that if you bang your head against a closed door, you just get a big headache. I've been fortunate. I had a, an administration, a dean's office, that basically said, fantastic, go as fast as you can, tell us what help you need. Um, actually, we've not had this approved through Senate yet. We're going to go to them next month and say, would you like to approve the course that we've been running in stealth mode through 600 <laughs> students? That's what I call breaking the rules. We just, I learned the, the way to break the rules was to give it a temporary code so it wasn't an official course. Right? <laughs> they, get, they get credit. Um, I've also had about 30 colleagues working on this, kind of uh, not only in the classroom but behind the scenes. So it's taken a big team effort. Find the people who are passionate who can help collaborate with you. So the idea revisited. Boring, slow, low participation. It's not acceptable in any walk of life. Focus on, I'm a marketing guy. Focus on the customer. I see students as customers. Focus on what their kind of needs are. Develop a pilot for a new approach. Mash things up. Test things out. Kind of, slow, uh, kind of fast and good is better than slow and perfect. Um, and get some evidence so that people can't just kind of argue with you on opinion. Um, so the challenge I was going to give you was to challenge your status quo. But even after half of the session today, having heard many of the other speakers, I'm going to go back and re-challenge myself to go and not accept this new pilot uh, as it is, but to actually take it a little bit further. Thank you very much, and wave your bananas. Thank you. Thank you.